What's so up, Chooch? Back with another one. Today, I'm out here on a brand new trip. I just took a brand new trip to go ride some trails. Took the V13, took the M104, and the Inmotion V12. But I really did a lot of riding on the Inmotion V13 and the M104, surprisingly. I had a lot of fun with the M104 just cruising around. But the V13, man, I had a blast on the trails with this thing, and it just absolutely impressed me again. Um, and it just has been my go-to. The Inmotion V13 has just really been my go-to wheel. Um, I'm liking the suspension on it. I'm liking the just the way it rides. And it's something I've gotten so used to and I'm just sticking with. And it's just, it feels right. It really does. And I wanted to give you all some tips um, and some pointers. Because I know a lot of you out there that trail ride and stuff on these things. Uh, there, there's just a lot of things, little things you can do to really improve and I just was thinking about them and I was like, man, if I share those with some people, I bet it'll help them a lot. Um, so let's go on a beautiful trail ride through the Rocky Mountains. And I'm going to be telling y'all some tips and tricks just to become a better trail rider and electric unicycle rider in general. Um, so the best thing I can really tell you guys is that'll make you an instant better rider is this is you want to work on your your posture when it comes to riding electric unicycles you see how my legs are bent almost like in the squat posi position like whenever i used to release videos back whenever i, I started trail riding with non-suspension wheels and i was always riding in the squat position i even had like you know troll comments and they're like it looks like dude it looks like you're taking a dump when you're riding around on this thing it's like you're sitting on the toilet the whole time you're riding around and it's because you're in that like squat position and that's what i adapted to because of riding wheels that didn't have suspension for so many years and then i because i, I lo love the trail ride no suspension wheels and i still love to do that but what you have to do is get in that squat position and really loosen up your whole upper body, guys. Starting, starting at the top of your knees, where your knees, at the crest of the top of your knees, from that point up, all the way up to your head, needs to be loose as a feather. It needs to be like a tree in the wind. And then your legs, like your shins down to your feet, need to be like your roots. They need to be completely solid and just you know that that part really needs to be planted but your upper body needs to be flowing man it just needs to be completely loose and you don't need to be riding all rigid what what will help and what you'll notice is if you don't do this especially on a non-suspension wheel if you try to ride it off-road and you have stiff legs and you come into an abrupt little bump or anything like that you'll you'll get kind of jacked forward on the wheel and you'll rev the wheel up and then it, you, when the wheel hits it'll be going full speed and it'll really mess you up and you won't do it too many times but that's one tip right there to teach you is just to stay loose and kind of get in the squat position almost like you're on the toilet and it really helps with your off-road riding and it what it really helps with is those unexpected bumps you're ready for them you're already in the position to absorb that bump that's coming up so it's not gonna you know the biggest thing with eucs is those are if you're riding kind of like a zombie on it you know with straight legs and you hit a bump it's gonna really you know shoot you off in a direction you don't want to go in it's gonna make the wheel spin and rev up you don't want that to happen so that's my first tip right there and then this is another thing that you want to really work on um with with your your trail riding is you, of course you want to pick your you want to pick great lines guys you want to pick lines that aren't where you're going to be going into like a ravine or something like that if you could have like a an abrupt kind of a erosion or a washout or anything like that you want to come up to it and kind of preload and glide over it you know you don't want to just go into it with you know stiff legs again or whatever you just want to pick a good line around it or a good line through it and kind of predict how you're going to take that bump or anything like that it's really important on euc and it really changes the game up for your flow on the trails instead of riding through kind of rigid and bumpy you can glide right through okay so pick pick good lines that's you know tip number two for sure and you want to brake hard and brake late as possible and carry your corner speed okay and now this is harder with your your bigger wheels and one thing that, that is 
you're gonna want to do on your bigger wheels for sure is is this tip right here is the brake hard and brake late and carry your corner speed because with your bigger wheels they just don't have the same torque as the smaller diameter wheels they get out of your corners so on the inmotion v12 and and the v12 high torque for example or any you know like any smaller wheel out there really you can go into corners basically lose all your corner speed and then really accelerate hard out of the corner one thing you got to do with a bigger wheel like this is you have to carry corner speed because if you lose all your corner speed it's extremely hard to kind of accelerate out of the corner in a graceful manner you're going to be kind of you know kind of twitching out of the corner and trying to get your speed back up and it's going to be wobbly and unstable as opposed if you brake hard brake late carry corner speed and you'll be able to glide around that corner no problem and you really need to do that with a bigger wheel like the inmotion v13 or any of it really helps on any wheel but especially with the bigger wheels because once you you know rub all your corner speed off and then you have an abrupt uphill it's you you get that awkward thing going on where you're trying to lean too far forward on the wheel and it just makes your whole weight off balance going up the next hill so that's why it's important to carry that corner speed and you'll adapt to it and it changes up your trail riding the faster you can carry corner speed the smoother your whole trail riding experience will be so all right and then another tip you've heard it in other videos before you know i'm not going to go into this one in depth but the faster you go the farther ahead you need to look okay so the f it, when you're going into a corner like this you can look down okay but as soon as you start accelerating fast you know you need to be looking forward and ideally the farther ahead you can look and not look at the ground in front of you the better but the faster you go the farther ahead you need to look okay and that comes with street riding or trail riding particularly with trail riding once you get moving and grooving you need to be looking way ahead down the trail because you can't do anything about the you know the the rock or the root or the obstacle immediately in front of you look far ahead where you want to go and you'll glide right over whatever obstacles there may be on the trail if you look at them you're going to hit them and you're going to go down so that's my other tip avoid doing that All right. another random tip that i have for you that is really helpful for suspension eucs guys now this is crazy that i, I found this out okay so i recently had my, my garage door recently completely screwed up like i didn't do i pressed the garage door button and this thing literally like twisted metal happened bro i don't know what went on like you know how the the things that come down the, the, the garage door tracks dude one of them like the cable broke on one side and then the other side just kept going and it literally destroyed everything and so i had to have the garage door repair man come out here and fix it all and he whenever he left and got everything fixed he gave me a, a bottle of of the garage door lubricant to spray on the tracks and like because of what had happened is the tracks had just become you know unlubed over time and it just that's what happened it just got a jam in it and just tore it all to hell so <laughs> so basically i had this garage door lubricant there and i'm like hey you know this stuff might be really good to spray in the slider mechanism of the v13 or the s22 or any suspension euc really um so i sprayed that garage door lubricant you know right in the suspension sliders of it and dude this thing is like a night and day difference i'm not kidding you and i also was getting a little bit of a vibration in the v13 uh, some of you may have seen this as well like where you get off the wheel and you kind of push it and it has a vibration to it and some people kind of panicked and freaked out about this there is literally a simple way to fix that vibration all you need is a 2.5 millimeter allen key you go into the very bottom of the wheel where the suspension sliders are and you got to go kind of far in there almost like an inch kind of in there with that 2.5 millimeter allen key it has to be 2.5 millimeter and you literally tighten it up a little bit and it'll what it does is it tightens up those suspension sliders in there and it takes that vibration out because what happens over time like anything those suspension sliders are going to wear down a little bit and they are replaceable those those um kind of those plastic sliders where they are where this whole thing glides up and down um mine were not too worn but you know after 1300 miles on this wheel it just needed to be tightened up a little bit i actually took the whole thing apart 
wondering why it was doing a little bit of vibration and uh, in motion was like yeah just tighten it up with that 2.5 millimeter um you know adjustment on the bottom and it'll take that vibration away did that and it's good to go and then i sprayed that garage door um lubricant on there it's just like lithium grease is it's perfect and it's just in a spray can so you can really get it in there if you don't want to take the whole wheel apart and it, that's going to be perfect for the s22 it'll be good for any bigo to spray on that on the sliders or you know the v13 i mean that's really good stuff and it made a huge difference in just the way i mean you can just tell the suspension is just working way better in this video than the past videos i mean i i can definitely see it it's just gliding over every little bump with no um it it, it really had it was really kind of binding up honestly like i really didn't notice it but after i sprayed that garage door lubricant in it i'm telling you man it's awesome it's riding great um but that's my other tip garage door lubricant and your suspension mechanism so another really important thing for your single track trail riding is your tires when it comes to eucs guys and most eucs now surprisingly really come with a just a great tire out of the box to ride trails with for instance the stock v13 tire is what you want you want those square knobbies that really grab in the corners well because if you get something guys like one of those just um like for instance like the v12 high speed th that tire that comes stock on that more of a street tire kind of like a dual purpose tire but more of a street tire if you go really hard into your corners you're going to completely lose traction guys and one thing you can do to over overcome if you want to just go if you have street tires and you want to maybe just hit a trail real quick with some friends one thing i one tip i have for you is to get way lower in your corners lower your whole center of gravity lower your rear end lower your body in in the corners way lower and it really helps you stick in those corners if you have a more bald tire for instance, my M Super X that I have has a completely bald street tire on it, but I love taking that thing trail riding, especially on trails that have pine straw all over them. I took them up into the um, like Pacific Northwest last year, and this trail was just covered in pine straw and moss and everything, and it was so sketchy riding it through there with that bald tire, but if I wanted to be able to rip around those corners and maintain traction, I just had to get a little bit lower in every corner. I'm talking to the point where you can almost put your hand down in the corners and you'll be able to just stick like glue even with a bald tire. But the more square those knobbies are, the more aggressive those knobbies are, the more upright your posture can be and the harder you can go under your corners with you know no fear of slipping out. So definitely, um, even like the Shinko 244 tire, that's the one I have on my EXN. The Shinko 244 is more of like a dual sport tire. That's what you would put on like a, like a, for instance, like an adventure bike or something like that, where you'd be riding kind of off-road and on-road. And even that one, guys, the knobbies are more rounded on it. And you, I can really notice on my Shinko 244, I'm sliding out way more than on this tire right here and i'm not sure i think this is that standard tire that comes on the um sherman as well i it's, it's a well-known tire i'm not sure exactly the name of this tire on the v13 is stock but um it is a good one so definitely the more square the knobbies are the better they are for off-road that's what i've just come to, to find out my next tip is your body is the most important and the best electric unicycle suspension out there and this goes for you, you have to learn like just like that just going over bumps and and ridges and everything like that you cannot just stay upright and just expect the suspension to do everything even with a suspension euc and i think that's one of the main downfalls with people that get a suspension euc as their first wheel they don't learn all those little nuances that you have to do on a non-suspension wheel if you ride a non-suspension wheel, you know, rigid, you know, zombie legged, straight legged, I mean, you, you can't do it. It's almost impossible. You're going to hit rocks. You're going to hit abrasions and bumps, and you're going to learn over time. You really got to bend your knees and flow and jump with the wheel and, and all of that. But if you're a person that just gets a suspension wheel, you're going to ride it and just think, oh, the suspension's going to do all that. You know, and I don't need to worry about doing any of that. 
And I'm telling you, it will be your greatest downfall is not learning how to use your legs, how to, you know, preload, how to jump and flow with the terrain, even though you don't have suspension, or even if you do have suspension, you still need to do it. And in combination with the suspension, that's how you get the ultimate smooth ride. It's still using your body like, you know, unweighting and using your body like suspension, using your knees. Even though you have suspension, you got to still use your body. And that's one thing I see people doing. They get these suspension wheels. They just expect the suspension to do everything. And it's not like a motorcycle. You know, you can get away with that on a motorcycle. You see some of these heavy set enduro riders that just rely on that good suspension. They just sit down, man, they're like 280 pounds and they're just getting grip riding that thing. And you know, the suspension's doing what it needs to. With the EUC, you can't do that, man. You really got to use your whole body and it will make the ride so butter smooth, man. In comp, man, you're using your knees as suspension, your body is suspension, and the EUC has suspension. Oh man, it's like gliding on butter through these trails. But you gotta remember to do that, even if it's your first time, you know, out riding trails and you just bought a wheel, you know, nice wheel, even S22 Pro with that big coil suspension, still gotta use your knees, bend your legs, you know, and, and kind of ride in that flowy manner. To get the most out of your trail riding experience on a EUC. All right, so the next thing, the best best key tip I have for you guys that want to switch it up and start trail riding a little bit is get your tire pressure right. Now this is going to make all the difference in the world, and it'll make your trail riding experience, you know, it, it'll make it either awful or perfect. But this is key, and it took me so long to really understand tire pressure on electric unicycles and it was kind of intimidating because i really didn't have like a uh, a good reference point you know back when i first started riding these things i've been riding since 2015 and back with the first wheels there was really nobody they could tell you you know what's the best tire pressure to ride off-road etc but from experimenting riding all the different wheels i've dented rims before i've done big sins i've you know done the whole nine yards when it comes to you know, tire pressure, I've had it too high, I've had it too low, so I can really tell you exactly the sweet spot for your weight and all of that. So let's get into it. So when it comes to off-roading, guys, you really don't wanna ever go above about 40 PSI if you can help it, okay? If you're a heavier weight rider, 200, you know, 200 pounds plus, you might need to go up to 45 and to, have enough you know cushion there on the on the rim and still be able to get the most amount of traction but if you're a heavy rider you know you still want to keep the tire pressure a little bit higher off-road than a lower weight rider because if you strike a you know a root a rock or you hit a big jump you don't want to be damaging your rim and you know tire pressure is what keeps the rim from getting damaged on these things and as it be a one-wheeled machine all your weight on top of it you you know tire pressure is important you got to have it right off-road you don't want it too low you don't want it too high so what i typically run for my off-roading you know on every wheel out there i used to really think with the you know i needed to have it different between the bigger you know 22 inch wheel if i'm running a 16 inch wheel if i'm only you know whatever wheel it may be um i always thought i needed to change it and really mess with it and all this stuff but i really found guys like there's a sweet spot for me now i like about 38 psi and and pretty much all my wheels for my you know off-road on-road type riding stuff 38 psi seems to be perfect for me but i'm about 145 pounds if you're if you're a heavier weight rider guys you gotta increase that tire pressure a little bit so if you're off-roading maybe you know and you're heavier than me maybe try about like 42 pounds or so if you're about 220 pounds try about 42 psi in there but you you'll be able to tell you can dial it back if you're going into your corners and you're washing out a little bit dial it back if you're a person um, that doesn't you know ride where there's a lot of rocks if you're not jumping all of that you can get away with running it way lower and you're gonna really be able to go into your corners much faster and not skid out so but basically the rule of thumb is this don't go below about 27 psi on all the wheels out there I, 
because I mean it really feels good lower than that. You know, it 20, you know, 22, 24 psi off-road really feels good when that tire is able to fold into your corners and really grip hard, but you, you're risking um, damage in that rim. If you come around a corner and you strike a big rock sticking out, you know, that's just not enough PSI in that one wheel to, you know, keep that, you know, keep that rock from going all the way and impacting that rim. So, you know, best thing I can tell you guys, I like about 38 PSI. I'm about 145 pounds on all my wheels, you know, play with it. But usually don't go above 50. Don't go below 27. You can play with everything in between there for your weight, um, but you know, 38 is my favorite. All right, so now this is the next ultimate tip for anybody that's into EUC racing or getting into EUC trail riding particularly. Um, this really comes into key when EUC racing, guys. I, and this is the number one key um, for uh, for racing and and trail riding like long range like kind of like enduro trail riding like i'm doing here is to focus on your breath and you really need to do this you because it's easy to get caught in the moment on these things and be really focused on your riding and where your feet are and not running into trees and not hitting the rocks that are right there next to your pedals and focusing on the camera and all whatever it may be and you forget to breathe you know, it's, it's so simple, but I mean, you honestly, you forget to do it. So if you can remind yourself, and I always do it in races, guys, because in races, I get my adrenaline up, my heart starts racing like crazy. And especially like on the, the starting line, you know, it like at Apple Valley on the starting line to take off on an EUC race, your heart's just racing and you're just, for, you really are forgetting to breathe. You know, you got people sitting there talking and giving you thumbs up and high fives and ready to go. But if you can just kind of zone all that out and just focus on your breath, you know, focus on your inhale, focus on your exhale. And remember to breathe the whole time you're trail riding or you're racing or anything. And make that kind of one of your main focuses is your, your breathing, you know. Focus on what you're doing on your riding and and make sure you're breathing and not breathing hard But just breathing slowly and smoothly and it helps so much guys. It helps you not get fatigued It helps you be relaxed and you like again you you want your whole upper body just to be like a tree in the wind man Just kind of floating and flowing relaxed focusing on your breath in and out and your your you know your shins to be nice and firmly planted taking all that um you know all that force and everything and you should after a trail ride like this you know you should feel your calves burning you should feel your your quads burning that's where a lot of it is and your core so your core your calves and your quads um that's just an incredible workout man i'm telling you the core workout is the main thing you're mainly driving this thing with your your abdomen your core is where all of the nuances and the control and everything with the euc should come from and it should be you should work on doing it as graceful as possible you know you really need to focus on your posture your breathing and over time your speed will come okay so don't go out there and just try to ride full sin on the trails best thing you can do is posture breath take it easy and and you will literally learn to flow you won't run out of breath you won't get hot you won't get tired you literally can just cruise and it is a, an incredible feeling once you you know you, you get that kind of zen like flow to the whole um to your whole euc ride and it really helps guys i'm telling you this huge thing is just you know breathe body posture and be loose be loose at the top of your body you can just glide through the trails and an, another thing is I, I i want you to to kind of take this final thing into consideration here um instead of focusing on speed focus on your momentum and all right by this what I, I really want you to do it doesn't matter how fast you're going into the in the trails or anything like that but i want you to just try to carry momentum through whatever trail it is you don't have to be blazing fast you don't have to be going you know um top speed like people racing on these things whatever it may be but just try to honestly carry a little bit of of momentum and what that'll do guys is 
I see a lot of newer trail riders and a lot of like newer EUC videos out there where people are, are taking their wheel to the trails and they're just kind of putting along. And what happens is, you know, that's great and they're learning, but if you can just focus on bending your knees, body posture, carrying a little bit more momentum, um, what really you'll notice is you're gonna, the more momentum you can carry, you're gonna keep that wheel from hitting anomalies and deflecting. I see it so much, man. These people try to take these these EUCs on trails and they're hitting little rocks and stuff and the wheel is just deflecting back and forth to the side and it's like they're you know having a really hard time controlling it. You know, they got their arms up in the air, their body posture is kind of over the machine and every little deflection or whatever is just making them go off course. And it seems discouraging for people that try it and then they just get back on the road and only ride the EUC on the road. So what you need to do is just focus on, you know, lowering your center of gravity, lower that rear end and keep your momentum up and then focus on, you know, the faster you can roll, you don't have to be going full speed, but the faster you can carry through the trail, it makes it to where even if I were to hit one of those rocks back there, I got so much forward momentum going, so much mass rotating on this heavy wheel, I'm going to keep going. And there's been instances where even I've pedal clipped on this thing. And because I'm going, you know, at, I'm not going fast, but I'm carrying momentum, it really helps with it. You can hit, you know, a rock anomaly and you can deflect right off of it and just keep going straight. As opposed to if you're going a little bit slower and you hit that rock or anomaly, you're going to completely lose control and deflect off a of course. And that is, man, that is really what I see the problem is with newer trail riders on EUCs. It's just the body posture is way too high up and then they're going, you know, way too slow for the conditions and they're just hitting everything and deflecting off the course and it looks so discouraging. But, you know, it's easy to completely negate that and once you do, you'll, you'll find a love for, for EUC trail riding. If y'all are wondering about the hoodie that I'm wearing right here, this is the performance hoodie from Lazy Rolling and I wear it in the summertime because it does offer so much protection. I have the level two pads in this one and the performance hoodie is more breathable for the summertime. So that whole lower me mesh like section and the air can go right through it, but it does have that full um, you know, protection in it. And those level two pads are substantial, especially the back pad. I have a big thick back pad in this, um, great elbow pads, great shoulder pads in this thing. And if I unzip it just a little bit like that, wear a t-shirt under it, I can really regulate my, my temperature even on a, a hot day. And I'm telling you, if you go down, guys, you want something that can really protect you even from, you know, road rash on the trails. Even that, you know, that, that dirt rash when you go down. Um, you can wear elbow pads. You can wear, you know, the you know the exoskeleton thing but i really after the years of riding i really like the lazy rolling jackets even in the summertime and being able to just unzip it as much as you need to and regulate the temperature works out for me perfectly i got a discount code below for 20 bucks off if you guys want to use it definitely make sure you use that code or, or use that link if you just use the link it automatically applies the discount so that's how how that works for the jackets it's the lazy rolling um link below anyways um and you can get all different ones you can get different colors you can get different pads in it whatever like for instance my green jacket that i wear a lot um that has like the flex pads in it and i like that one as well but this one's perfect for the summer the performance hoodie is what you want for summertime and y'all can see by now that how the v13 is just performing is so well um Y'all could see just the the speed I'm able to maintain and just the flow and just how smooth I'm able to cover so much ground and so much. I mean, these trails right here, if you were trying to do it on a non-suspension wheel, you could do it, but you just wouldn't be able to do it as fast and it would really wear you out over time. That suspension on this V13 really works very well for trails, guys. It's just the setup of it, the way it articulates, the way... I mean, it really is perfect for trail riding. It really takes a little bit to get used to though because it is so heavy compared to anything you're gonna come from. But man, it is just, it, it's, it's my go-to from now on. I mean, even on this trip, I even took the V12 high torque with me, but you know, I, I kept going for the V13, honestly, just because 
Man, I don't know. It's just once you get used to the V13, it's just it's it's really it is incredible. I mean, this wheel, this electric unicycle right here, is very hard to beat right now. Um, I mean, I would I would love to try you know the Beagle Extreme and see if that how that held a candle to this thing, but I mean. It is an expensive wheel, you know, at $4,000, I know a lot of people, especially for first time buyers, I still don't recommend this for a first time buyer of electric unicycles. I still highly recommend going with something like the V12 High Torque or, you know, even, even something, you know, a little bit more entry level than that for your first wheel. Um, this definitely is not something you want to get as your first wheel, but if you're, if you're in the market looking for something that you're gonna be happy with, that, I mean, that you'll be able to just look at and, and be in awe at, at the, the design of this thing and just the way it rides, just the way it looks, the engineering behind it, um, and really what you get for what you spend on, uh, it, it really works out, honestly. Um, it is an expensive wheel, but man, it is just a beautiful product. It is, I mean, incredible. Uh, you really can't go wrong with this thing, man. And I, I have put it through the ringer. I honestly have. I've given this thing just absolute hell. I've pushed this thing. Um, I've jumped it. I've dumped it. I've, you know, crashed it. I've bashed it. You can see a hard crash I had on the trails with this thing. And that's not the only one. You know, I've had many crashes with this thing. Um, you know, many times where it's flipped over down the side of a trail or whatever, and it just keeps going. There's nothing wrong with this thing. And man, I, I, I follow a lot of mountain bike pages and stuff, and I just see how mangled these people's mountain bikes get just from a, you know, a trail ride. And just, they got bent rims, they're tearing up, you know, sprockets and, uh, you know, shifters and all that stuff. And what, when you trail ride something like, you know, a b mountain bike or a dirt bike or anything like that, you're going to break stuff, you know. It's it's common to dent a pipe on a dirt bike or to break a shifter or break a brake lever or something like that over, you know, you're not going to do a thousand miles without tearing something up. But with, with this wheel right here, I mean, nothing's gotten torn up on it. There's literally nothing wrong with it. I've, I mean... I, I've taken this thing apart and I've looked at the inside guys and the build quality is just ridiculously good for an electric unicycle. I've been, you know, working on these things, riding them since 2015. I've taken pretty much every type of wheel apart. You know, all the B-goads, the old school B-goads, um, the King songs. I mean, I've taken them all apart. I've seen the insides of them. If you take this wheel apart and you look at the insides of this thing, like the way everything's wired and cable managed and just, it is incredibly good. It is just top notch. And it shows right here. You, guys, you see when it comes to my other wheels that I review and whatnot, there's a reason, you know, I, I don't keep riding them. And if you don't see me riding them anymore, it's because they don't work anymore. And the V13, the V12, my in-motion wheels have just they keep going like crazy. I mean, I don't, I really don't know how to explain it. They just, they do the trick for me. Um, I've I haven't had a single problem with one yet, which is mind blowing. I really have not had a single issue with any in motion wheel yet. Um, if it was, it was like a minor thing or like my mistake where I put the motor in backwards. <laughs> Y'all can see that video where I put the motor in backwards in the v12 and it shot into the wall and <laughs> destroyed the baseboard heater but that was you know that was my fault and i was able to turn the motor around and fix that so um i literally haven't ever had an issue with the in motion electric unicycle and i have done thousands of miles on them now so that's um that should give you peace of mind if you do want to pick one up um and you know if you go with any wheel out there um that's completely up to you. I'm not telling you which one to get, whatever, but I'm telling you like the V13 and the V12 high torque and the V12 high speed have just been excellent. I mean, they really have. So that's why you've seen so much of the V13 and so much, um, you know, content on this wheel is because it has worked so well and I've gotten used to it and I just really enjoy riding it. I genuinely enjoy riding this wheel. And I could ride it all day, every day. If I could just ride trails on this all day, every day, I'd be the happiest man alive. I just, that's all I want to do is just 
is just have somebody that <laughs> like a little drone that follows me and like live streams it and me just ride trails all day long every day on this thing and i would be the happiest man alive it's it's great um you know it's to me i like i love snowboard and i love the way that feels you know coming down the mountain gliding this is just it adds so much more you know challenge to trail riding having the low pedals that's what one thing that people don't really look at like mountain bikers really don't appreciate how low our pedals are on these things so one thing we're having to always do is just read you know every little rock that's coming up to navigate those pedals around and it, it's very challenging and to some people out there they do it one time and they slam a pedal into one of those rocks and they'd be like dude this is stupid why why would you try to ride this when you could mountain bike on this but it's just man it adds a level of challenge to it it keeps the mind engaged and it man it just I love it. I don't know. Something about UC Trail Ride is just, it's awesome. So if you haven't done it before, I highly suggest giving it a try. Um, you will, you'll love the UC Trail Ride. But those are my tips and tricks I have, and just some a little bit of you know talk about um, trail riding these things. If y'all enjoyed the video, throw it a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one, where we talk about how to work your way up to hitting big jumps. So this has one of been like been one of my biggest fears on EUC is working my way up to big mountain bike park jumps. And the doubles scare me so much, but I want to work my way up to the big doubles. And that's gonna be the next thing we do on the channel. We're gonna be talking about how to hit jumps and how to work your confidence up to them. And you'll be jumping in no time. So subscribe and we'll get you flying high next time. Oh, my God.